I'm Gab, he's Jules, blue skies over <laughs> West London, uh, darkness in my heart, and in front of my eyes, Jules, I'm wearing this, I, I couldn't get a, a, a paper bag, so I'm yeah. wearing this, uh, this brown box Shots over my box. head to symbolize the embarrassment <laughs> of Italy being eliminated. I wasn't sure you would turn up this morning. Like, no, no. We no, can make uh, fun of you. It's good. Yeah, you know, I, I got all philosophical after 2018, <laughs> uh, missing out on the World Cup, and then again yeah. missing out this Two time too. In a row. Obviously, we'll be talking about that on the show. Yeah. We've got well, we've got the playoffs. We've got Gareth Bale's heroics. Amazing. We have Sweden beating the Czechs. We got Cristiano. Whoa, that was close at one yeah, point with Borac Yilmaz's penalty. But, just did. Um, but obviously, there's one place to start. Um, Italy play Macedonia yeah. in Palermo. Italy, who had never lost a World Cup qualifier at home in the history of the universe. Um, 59, 59 games, is that right? or something? Like I that? don't even know. I, yeah. I can't count that high. Um, and then what happens? They go, they batter, they have a ton of the ball. They take a million shots, 19 blocked shots. Yeah, 32 19, shots, 19 uh, 19 blocked. of them blocked. It's pretty extraordinary. And, uh, yeah, the minute 92. Um, I mean, uh, well done for boycotting the World Cup in Qatar. I knew you, I know that you didn't want to go as Italian, we, so... <laughs> we are making a political <laughs> statement. Um, well done. What happened? Okay. Okay. This is a game where we all knew Italy would have a lot of the ball. We knew that Ciro Immobile, and maybe that's why he got the, arm, the armband as well, in the sense like, okay, this is your responsibility, you know, come and show the way and score the goals that will send us to the World Cup. Insigne and Berardi, the other two of that front three, that was always going to be key because it was all about when or how Italy would score. And after that, once you score the first one, then the rest is easy, right? The thing is, the first one never came. The first one never came. Probably should have come in the first half with Berardi. What, what did he do? Uh, How, what, the, I, shot, the shot was so soft. Yeah. I, look, I, I think you can add this to the long list of individual mistakes. And, and this is why Italy does not deserve to go to the World Cup. Um, you know, More than one thing can be true. Yeah. I believe Mancini's going in the right direction with his team. I think Italian football is going in the right direction broadly with the national team. There's so many other things that they can fix and do better. But, but the thing is, football is a low-scoring game. Yeah. And, you know... And we can't complain about this in UEFA. We, there's third, UEFA have 13 spots at the World Cup. There's only 55 teams in UEFA. And I'm being generous because I'm including yeah, San Marino and Andorra and those guys, yeah? yeah? There's no excuse for not going to the World Cup. And the nice thing about European World Cup qualifying is that you get so many second chances, right? It's, yeah. not, it's not like Africa where you win your group and then you're home and away and you're in and out, right? Yeah. Italy had those chances. They dominated Switzerland at home. Yeah. Jorginho misses a penalty. They dominate Switzerland away. Jorginho, Jorginho misses a penalty. Yeah. They dominate Bulgaria even more. Yeah. They give up that stupid equalizer yeah. um, when they just switch off defensively. Those are three things. And still they weren't out. Still they had this chance tonight. Still they had these opportunities on the night. Yeah. Still they switch off when, um, when, when he's shooting on, when, when, when Tchaikovsky's shooting on goal. Because you, can, you know what? If he doesn't make that shot, it goes into extra time. I still like Italy's chances in extra time yeah. or on penalties, right? I mean, there's only so many times you can stumble and screw things up. Yeah. And I think that is what's most frustrating. Yeah, I, I completely, completely. Sorry, no, most frustrating is not going to the World Cup. That is yeah, the second most frustrating. You know, the argument that says, oh, would you rather win the Euros and then not to go, not go to another World Cup? I, you know, I would say, yes, England will take that, blah, blah. This is not the point. Yeah, well, we're not the England. Okay, not. We're not England. And Italy should qualify to every World Cup and be in every competition to go and win it. Not just because you won the Euro, it's okay not to go to the World Cup two years later. No. This is, you know, Marco Verratti was 21 when he last played a, a World Cup game. He won't be, he would be 33 for the next one if they qualify that and Donnarumma is yet waiting made his debut at 16 he would be 27 <laughs> or something ridiculous before playing it's, it's, I think it's a disaster it's the right direction I'll talk to you about Mancini coach, coaching during the game because yeah. I really struggled we're going to get into that into more granular detail but I'm sorry <laughs> yeah and look I think inevitably what happens here is you have the inquest you have the root and branch reviews you have you know burn it all down start over again like I said, we're not in that situation. I don't think it's what, it's what grown-up teams do. I think fundamentally what you have is you have a lack of individual talent in key positions. It's, yeah, it's so And position. I'm, not, you know, I'm not having a go. And it's, it's not like Insigne, Berardi, Immobile. These aren't terrible players. 
but they're not great players. And there's not, they're not great like some of the strikers we had. In 2006, when Italy won the World Cup, Italy's strikers, their names were Francesco Totti, Ale yeah. Del Piero, Pippo Inzaghi, Luca Toni, right? Yeah. This is completely different from these people. Because Italo Sport wrote that Insigne is ready for Canada. No disrespect, MLS. You kind of have a point. Yeah, but is having an amazing season in Serie A. 14 goals, 11 assists. This is a really good player in a good season. He's a player who's 27 years old and still plays for Sassuolo. I mean, true, this is the reality. True. He's very good. But it's not like, you know, he's going to blossom into something. Yeah, no, that's, this is what that's he is. Right. He's a very good player. And the difference between an outstanding player and a very good player is that the outstanding player goes and breaks through more often, yeah. you know, against a very well-defended team. We need to give a shout-out to Macedonia, too. Of because Amazing. You know, just for context, right? The Talisman Goran Pandev retires. Yeah. Uh, LF Elmas, who arguably their best player, yeah. suspended for this game. Yeah. And they go out there. They had a, a, a simple game plan. They defended deep. They defended really well, putting bodies on the line. There was something yeah. Burnley-esque, and I say that in a good way about it. And then they're rewarded with that little bit of luck that you yeah. always need at the end. Tarkovsky so, played four years in Palermo. His son was born there, and then he came back and, and scored the winner. And he is, and I think he's one of the few um, Macedonian players who had scored against Italy before yeah, as well. So, true. yeah, there's a bit well of karma there as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Well, well done. done. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.